out there and welcome to my channel. My name is Milesy and today I'm going to be talking about something that came up on stream for you guys a couple of weeks ago, but for me it was just a few hours ago. Uh, but I had mentioned the lights that I use in this room and some of you expressed some interest in wanting to know more about the equipment side of how to do streams and how to do YouTube videos. I've already showed you the software side and a little bit of the hardware, but I never really went into it too much. So since I got a new light today, I figured I'd go ahead and tell you guys about it. And the reason why I got a third one, I already have two of these um, on these stands right here. But the light that I'm using right now to light this shot is the one that normally sits over my shoulder. And every time I have to move these around, it changes the lighting in my recording area from, you know, when I'm doing my speed stitches, it's just not nice. So I bought a third one. The irony build, uh, being that to film this video, I had to move around my entire thing again. Uh, so yeah, this will be the last time though. But the lights that I use, I actually use two of them. Uh, but the ones that I've been really liking so far are these right here. B-Land 5.7 inch ring, uh, ring light with tripod stand and it actually even comes with a phone clip but it doesn't say that and it says it's for YouTube videos and makeup which yeah I mean they're pretty decent for this. Uh, these are not professional grade lights by any stretch of the means. These are actually $35 on Amazon uh, and this is now my third one. I really like these. They're super cool so I'm gonna there it is. Go ahead and cut into this thing and show you guys a little bit about what you can expect from these lights. Show you how to put them together uh, because they are a bit tricksy. And kind of go through the pros and cons. Ooh, this one's got a fancy bag. The other ones didn't come with a fancy bag, but look at this. Isn't that lovely? I'm gonna use that bag for something else. Okay. Oh, this one's all different. This one's totally different. That's cool. It's a different model, apparently. Uh, but it does look like it mostly has all of the same pieces. Uh, it's put together. Yeah, that's the same. Uh, just the switch is different. Uh, and the switch is not only different, it's in a different buttons are in a different order, so that's nice. But we can go through that. So let's just take a look at the tripod first. Uh, because the tripod is actually the aspect of this that I had the biggest problem with. So let's see if it's the same. Uh, yes, it is. So, here we go. Get out! So this is the tripod that it comes with. It has a bubble level on it, which is really nice. And it has a... Uh, Four steps of, I don't know, what, whatever you call that, the uh, telescopic whatever. This bit comes out and then the legs come out in three steps. So it gets pretty big, uh, a lot bigger than I thought it would be, especially going off of the pictures on uh, Amazon. My biggest problem with this though is one, it feels very flimsy and especially with these, you can tell the... Uh, the top ones aren't as easy to come out as these other ones here, so the bottom two go in and out pretty easily, but this one you really kind of have to force sometimes. And it's really flimsy, and I feel like I'm going to break it. It's also super lightweight, which is good for carrying it around. Like, if you want to film on the go, that makes, you know, something lightweight really good. Um, it means that these lights are constantly falling on me. I want to get some sturdier tripods. The tripod that I have it on right now uh, that I'm filming with is a much bigger, heavier, sturdier tripod uh, that doesn't fall over. But this one especially, it seems like every time I go to turn it off and on, it falls on me. Uh, so I'm trying to figure out how to keep it from doing that. But they are decent little tripods. They have all of the articulation that you'd want them to be able to have. They lock uh, into place everywhere that you'd want them to lock into place. And they are standard screw mount tripods right here. And there's, a, there's a sharp bit that just cut my thumb. But um, 
you know, watch out for that. But it is a standard tripod, which means that the light has a standard tripod mount on it right here. So if you already have a tripod with a camera foot or anything else like that, you can really very easily move this from one tripod to another. And the light itself uh, has a ball joint hinge and just a nice little screw here so it will go pretty much any angle you want it to as loosely or as tightly as you need it to be. And they are just a ring LED light. This is the size. I know just sometimes saying 5.7 inch doesn't really give some people a very good indication of size but this is how big they are. They're not enormous. They're not super professional uh, quality. Uh, they do feel a little flimsy, but they do also do the job. So I really like them. Um, and you can use them like I'm using for shoulder lights. You can put a camera in between. Uh, I've done that a few times with these already, just kind of trying them out. And they do come with a nice long cable. Let me untie all of this stuff here and show you how big the cable is. I want to say it's six feet. I want to say. And then I have this one on an extension cable and then this one's just plugged in over here. Yeah, about six feet is what that looks like here. And it has a little switch with the uh, power. You can brighten or dim the light and I'll show you that in a little bit. And it has three different modes that you can go through. My biggest problem with the light is that it is USB powered. Uh, so you do need to have yourself a nice special charge brick um, from like an old phone or something, or you need to be near your computer. Uh, this is kind of a pain in the ass. I'm not going to lie. Uh, but the light itself, really nice. Again, not perfect, but it is really nice and it does what I need it to do. And it also comes with this ridiculous thing. I'm going to just kind of show you how to put this together because there were people on Amazon that had a lot of problems with this, but it, this is a phone clamp and it is holding my iPod or I, iPod, iPhone 6 Plus. I think it's just the 6 Plus. It's not the 6 Plus S, but it is one of the larger models so far and it's holding that just fine. I do have to take my juice pack off though. Normally I have ow, my phone in a separate battery pack. It is not big enough to hold my phone with its case. Um, it just barely manages but I'm a little bit worried that it would fall out so I don't really want to try and I dropped it down here. There we go. So the clamp itself is really nice. You have these uh, little arms here that will open it up. And then when you put your phone in, it presses against the button and snaps it shut. And it's got this really nice soft foam. So even though the cake or the clamp itself is hard plastic, the phone or the foam is going to keep your phone from getting scratched up. And if you want to film in portrait mode, it's got these little feet that come out. And you've got this happy little guy just standing here holding your camera if you want to film in portrait mode, which is really nice. Uh, it doesn't seem like a lot of cam camera clamps can go both ways. But the confusing part for a lot of people was all of this mess. Make sure I've got everything. Looks like it. And this is the bit that will clamp onto a tripod. And I am just going to clamp it onto this tripod just to show you how it works. But it will go on to, whoops, any, yeah, that was right, okay. It will go on to any telescoping tripod with pretty much no problem at all. But let's put this over here somewhere. We'll put it down here for now. And the first thing we have on the back is this little bit in here where this guy, which looks like a uh, kind of an open screw. You put this in right here on the back and then it just slots up. Ah. And you kind of feel like you're gonna break it. You really have to force that in there. But that's what's going to hold the clamp itself to the ball joint, which we have right here. And this even came pre-assembled. My other one 
was not pre-assembled, but I have to take it apart anyway to put it on the tripod. So I have the ball joint right here and the screw. I put the, uh, or I guess it's, I guess that's the nut. So we put the nut over the ball joint like this, put the ball joint into there. It will kind of clamp in, but it will fall out really easily. So you just take this bit and you screw it on. And that will tighten it so the uh, bit that you snap the ball joint into can't come up, uh, can't come open anymore. So now it's on there forever until you decide to unscrew that thing. And then we have this bit here, the clamp that goes onto the tripod. And I have a little tiny complaint with this, which is that it has a screw and a nut. And the nut is not attached to the rig. So you have to be very careful not to lose the nut. And this one doesn't seem to want to go in all the way. There we go. And then the handle itself has a screw in it that kind of comes up like that. And then the actual assembly comes apart to fit any size tripod. It can go on a super beefy tripod really easily, but we're just gonna put it on its smallest setting. And it has these little rubber clamps on here to make the hard plastic grip onto whatever material your tripod is made out of. And where'd I put the tripod? There it is. And this is the bit you just kind of, uh, Ah, there we go. Clamp that onto the tripod just like this. I know that's a little hard to see. And then we take our screw handle and just screw this in using that nut there. And eventually it will tighten up. And there we go. That is not really going anywhere. The, uh, the tripod fell down before I got the uh, bone clamp to go down. So there we go. There is that. And I'm going to plug this in now and show you the actual light. But that's the phone clamp assembly. That's what I'm using right now to film. I'm filming on my phone. I'm trying to get into the habit of filming on my phone a little bit more because the camera is really nice. Uh, and not having to use my stupid webcam just makes it easier. I'm just, I don't know, I don't like taking the video off my phone, but I need to get into the habit. And hopefully this will help me do it. So let's take this guy here, um, unplug my phone cord, because I'm not using it. And there we go, let's turn it off first. So we have it plugged in, and you have your power. And when it's plugged in, the little um, switchboard thing lights up so that you know it has power, which is really nice. Because sometimes with these things, you can't tell if it has power or if it's just broken, but here we go. And I'll turn that down. You can dim this. It has, I think, either seven or nine steps of light. And it has three different temperatures. This is the one that I use. The bright white has a really dark yellow and a kind of a medium yellow. So you get all sorts of uh, different, different temperatures, different brightness levels. Bip. And it looks like they start on their highest one and then go down, so and there we go. Just really simple little lights. They're $35, I will put the links for these down below because they are awesome. I like them a lot. Uh, the other lights that I use are not actually um, meant for this kind of thing, but they kind of are, I guess, are these nice little aught lights. And you can get these, I think I buy these at Michael's and I get the really big, long lasting uh, $15 ones. Uh, so they're kind of expensive as far as lights go, but these are the lights that I have always used. I've only just recently within the last month started using these ring lights. And I have two of these, one over here, one over here. If you've watched the live streams, you've probably seen this one glaring into uh, the camera and I was using a pop filter to kind of make it less glare, but it's just a really nice bright white light. So with these, 
farther out and then the ring lights closer in, it's giving me a whole bunch of light right there on my embroidery so that there's not as much hand shadows or just inconsistent lighting. The more lighting you can put on your embroidery, really, the better. So I have two of these ring lights, two of these, and I'm pretty happy with it. And now I have a third so I can film these videos a little bit more easily. But there we go. That's just a little look at the lighting setup that I use. Um, in the future, I'll talk a little bit more about the cameras and the mounts that I use on my cameras and how I use those. Um, if you guys want, I'll talk about other aspects as well. But I would really love to see more people doing these kind of live streams, more people doing these kinds of videos. I think they're a lot of fun both to do and to watch. So if you have any questions about this or anything else, please put them down in the comments below and I will get to them as soon as I can. But thank you guys so much for liking, commenting, subscribing, all that fun stuff, and I will see you next time. Bye!